Welcome into the Paul Farrington Show. Paul joined by Jack Weinberger and Robert Ziggy Ziegler with a week eight reaction. If you're enjoying these shows, guys, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Week eight, as we said, was a, uh, a what was it, a giveaway week with our Pick'em League. And we actually have an eight-way tie, so by the time this is released, we'll know who the winner was. But heading into Monday Night Football, we have an eight-way tie for first place. Am I included? You're not included. Oh. Unfortunately. unfortunately, Jack is not included. I, I was bad this week. I think. Yeah, no, we, we got a bunch of people with, uh, with I believe it was 12 picks. They have 120 points in the week eight pool uh, at this point. So someone, two people, because Ziggy added an extra shirt. Ziggy's just running up our expenses through the roof here. But we'll have two people getting a uh, Paul Farrington Show merchandise over the next uh, week, hopefully. So we'll get in contact with the, whoever winds up winning in, in some way. We'll figure it out. Uh, week eight, though, National Tight Ends Day. Did you guys see the tight end statistics yesterday? Were unbelievable. Yeah. Sixteen touchdowns, hundred seventy-seven receptions. It's the most for tight ends in a single day ever. Kelsey finally uh, broke out from being a fan. Emerged, yeah. Twenty points, caught a touchdown. Someone, someone had a parlay, I think, with like eight or ten different tight ends. Uh, anytime touchdown, one hundred eighty-five grand on ten dollars. Producer Zach said uh, George Kittle at night for a uh, anytime touchdown. National Tight Ends Day. That hit. You think producer Zach, is he, he's not the kind of guy to do parlays for any time touchdown. So he's more of a single game, right? Uh, I, don't, right. I don't know. I think, you Zach's think he dips? Par, I think Zach's a parlay guy. Yeah, would have been the day to do a uh, yeah, tight end. It would have yeah. been. Come on. That would have been awesome. Um, so yeah, if you guys are enjoying this, you can always watch. Uh, if you can't watch on YouTube, you can always listen on audio, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. You want merchandise, it's in the description below. Just look to the link to our store. You don't have to necessarily win the Pick'em Contest. Uh, and then, of course, you can always become a member by going to our channel homepage and selecting become member. And you could and you could have access to a pick em leagues and all the challenges that we'll have as the season continues. Well, so, and now's a good time to become a member because we're for sure going to do a giveaway when we hit 15,000. Right and the there. way things have been going, for all we know, that could be tomorrow. Yeah, so this we, could be your last chance to get in before we do a big members giveaway. It's been awesome. Yeah, we, we really appreciate all the uh, support we've been getting recently, even though it tends to come at Ziggy and, and my expense. Like Jack, you're pretty good since you're a Steelers fan. You know, Blue Sky franchise, everything's always perfect. But a lot of the success of this show is based off of Ziggy and I's misery, and we understand that. Like we we understand the market. Whatever drives the viewers. I, I, yeah, I guess so. Um, and you know, real quick before we start, you know, you, everyone knows if you listen to this show, Ziggy's a party animal. Like Ziggy, Ziggy's all over the place. Hollow weekend, he's bouncing from party to party, and. And take a look at uh, who he ran into this weekend. You see this picture here? We're showing up on screen. <laughs> and Ziggy, that's that's you with us right here. Yeah, that's Paul and Jack. Look, yeah, look, I, mean, I couldn't believe it. Look at that, Ziggy. What was your reaction when you saw that? You're like, wait a minute. Are you are you Jack and Paul? What are I these? I mean, I, honestly, what? I've I've never been so interested. In I was going to say, Paul, I've never honestly. seen you happier to take a picture with either of us. So look at this couple. Uh, Jack, you're looking pretty good here. Yeah, you, look, mean, pretty, you look pretty cute too, Paul. It makes, <laughs> makes things a little Dang. weird. Uh, it makes things a little <laughs> weird on the show. I, 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 I don't know. I'm like attracted to myself in this picture. It's, yeah, I don't know <laughs> it's, what's it's happening a little strange. Here. It, uh, no more <laughs> Halloween parties for Ziggy. Imagine running into being Ziggy, running into people dressed as you and I for Halloween. Oh, look how happy he looks. I, yeah, I don't blame not him. Very, I don't blame him either. Very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Halloween parties go go pretty hard for the Paul Farrington show now. I guess it's awesome. All right, so Ziggy's still hung over. Ziggy still hung over. I mean, you yeah, look at those eyes. Look, look, <laughs> look at, at those eyes. Ziggy here. All go, right, go get, some, <laughs> go get some Advil. Go get some Advil. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we should stop this before we get in trouble. <laughs> there's there's, there's bad, the eye roll. Bad route. Okay, so uh, why don't we start off then? Moving on from Halloween, the Titans and the Lions. Uh, just an absolute bloodbath in Detroit. Well, as we expected. As we expected, I, but I, I, well, I don't know. I didn't see 50, uh, 52 point explosion I mean, I through three that. quarters. I mean, through I mean, three quarters, I mean, you saw that? No, coming? I didn't see that. I mean, this was just, I mean, we were at the Notre Dame Navy game this weekend. This was just the Notre Dame Navy game, right? Tied up 14, 14, and then disaster. I guess that wasn't the Notre Dame game at all. <laughs> yeah, I what I'm talking about. Yeah, I was gonna, I was <laughs> it was 14, say, seven. It was 14, seven. Yeah, it, it was 14, seven. 14, 14 seven, seven. And then the explosion happens. I, oh, I was watching and I was thinking to myself, a lot of points early in this one, 14, 14. I'm, I'm going, uh, you know, Tennessee could steal one from Detroit somehow. You know, I, I'm opt- I'm trying to be optimistic. Somehow they can steal one. And then it was every time you look back at the television, like Detroit, just seven more points. It, it kind of got, it got out of hand so quickly. I also had, I had the Lions laying like 11 and a half points. Oh, you had that? I had that, yeah. And, and then I saw that I was, it was 14 14. Oh my God, what a schmuck I am laying double digits in the NFL. Like, and this never wins. 
I and mean, then the flip just switches. Oh my god, here we go. But the thing was, it's not like Jared Goff just went crazy either. No, Jared Goff had maybe the worst three touchdown, zero interception game in NFL history. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I, he was he threw the ball fifteen passing yards, three touchdowns. Well, twelve for 15, 85 yards and three touchdowns. Well, he didn't really have to throw. Yeah, I mean, no, he didn't I, have, I thought he Goff, didn't have. He to. didn't have to do anything. That's what I'm saying. He had Gibbs seventy yard run. The uh, Khalif Raymond was just. Unbelievable. Did you see five punt returns, 190 total yards? He was 19 off the record for most punt returns in a game. They had kickoff return touchdowns. David Montgomery's throwing touchdown passes. Like the, the Lions are kind of just mocking people, it feels like. Their offense is that good right now. And the offense in this game, I, I think I saw um, Khalif Raymond in post game was saying that Ben Johnson was saying, hey, I can't use any of my plays because they just kept being set up inside the 30 yard line and then immediately would score It's like Ben Johnson didn't get to be that creative as of a play caller because it was turnovers. It was the punt returns, the kick returns. And if you're doing that against anyone, it's hard to win. But if you're doing that against the lions, it's, it's just impossible. And, uh, they just keep rolling, man. They're a scary team. Yeah. I remember a couple of weeks ago, someone had the audacity to say that the Vikings should be number one. Ahead of the I mean, lions. we lost, we lost two points. They probably weren't even trying. Well, <laughs> they, 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 they probably weren't even, they weren't even trying. That was brutal. I, isn't it so crazy how with five days difference, <laughs> I go from like this team is all in so much Vikings. better than you. No, they're not so much better. They are, but they're they're, they're so much better. They're so much better. This Come team on. is a, this team's a machine. I did, guys, they played the Titans. Let's relax. You wouldn't be the Titans by fifty. We, we might in a couple or weeks. Forty. We might in a couple. I mean, weeks. Yeah, so maybe you don't think the Titans game means a lot. They won in Minnesota. They demolished the Cowboys. They demolished the Seahawks. Like. They've got a tough loss to the Buccaneers early in the season, and that's it. I mean, who would have thought that by week nine, with the way things were going, that the Steelers will be higher in the power rankings for all of us and the Vikings by next week? I mean, how amazing Speak is, for yourself, man. I mean, how amazing it's is that? It's not the record rankings. It's not the record rankings. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think a record speaks volume. The, man, the contradictions on this show just run wild. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure someone could go back and dig up different things we've said, and they all contradict. Oh, I've probably, yeah. Like, well, I, think, I think the thing about this Lions team that just stands out to bring it back to them, as we said before the game, that this Lions team didn't feel like the kind of team that would fall into the trap game trap. And plenty of teams did this weekend, right? There were a lot of games that were way closer than they should have been, or you're like Baltimore going to Cleveland and you get upset. Like, that's easy to happen. This Lions team, I think the thing that's most impressive about them is they come to play every single week. And if they smell any blood in the water, they will take you out. Dan Campbell's Dan Campbell is crazy. And I do, again, I still think that it's a slight concern if I were a Lions fan that his aggressiveness could cost them. But he's an unbelievable leader. Like, I don't yeah, want whatever any your other... aggressiveness costs you. It also lets you do things like this. Yeah, it, it's. I don't watch any other post game coach in the locker room other than Kevin O'Connell and and Dan Campbell. Like he's the only like his speeches they, they make you want to run through a wall. Yeah, I mean, literally the only job you have as an NFL head coach is to get your guys ready to play. That's it, and he does a great job of that. <laughs> it's the Lions. This is a special season. It, it feels like one for for Detroit fans. Last year they were very very good, and it seemed like they were. I, I thought for a chance that I mean for a moment it looked like they were going to the Super Bowl. They probably should have gone to the Super Bowl. But this year, it's like they are the alpha dog in the division right now. And Philly's coming on. I think that they're on the radar now. The uh, the 49ers are stayed alive. I mean, they beat Dallas, so they're, they're back, and they're going to have some guys returning from injury soon, mostly Christian McCaffrey. But this is, this is the Lions conference at the moment. And games like this, I mean, Lions fans are going to look back on this. The way I felt about the 9 Vikings, like there's a couple teams – when you're, when you're not a Steelers fan, Jack, you have teams that you really remember specifically because it's like you only get it once every 10 years or so. Uh, and the lines are built to last, but this this team is just amazing. I mean, it, it is it is a tight-knit group of really good football players. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, this, is the, uh, this is the Lions conference in my eyes, 100%. I can't wait to upset them in the playoffs. Which is also very possible. This is the Lions, you got to remember. Uh, I don't know. Do the Lions have... I saw some... Oh, sorry, you go first. No, you no, I'm just trying to think. Like, as a Vikings fan, I know that if we were great like this, it would wind up, we'd wind up playing some team like the Bucks and they'd hit an insane field goal to beat us. Like, I'm trying to think where did, what happens to the Lions aren't in this situation very often. Like, what happens to the Lions in the playoffs? Is it have think, they already overcome the curse because they don't suck? Well, no, I think it's just something like last year is they can smell yeah, the Super Bowl and they just blow a lead. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, I saw a stat the last however many games, I don't know exactly. Jared Goff has it's 21 touchdowns 
and like 17 incompletions. I know it's crazy. It, it, like I, it's, it that is seems crazy. impossible to me. And that was the stat. It was 21 TDs and 17 incomplete passes in the last however many games. Lamar's more spectacular than Jared Goff is. I'm out on Lamar now. But, J- but Jared Goff has just been, <laughs> I mean, he's, he's almost been perfect. Yeah. Like, that's, it's, it's crazy. No, like, he can't do those well, things. You see Lamar scramble. And no, throw Lamar. Stunts. Lamar does. That's crazy what he does. Lamar's a better football player than Jared Goff overall. But Jared Goff is playing. For, I'm sorry, Ziggy, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, well, I think that's what's so interesting about the NFC North is we sit back here, we say the Lions are playing near perfect. They've had an incredible season so far. But, like, they're 6-1. and one. The Packers are 6-2, and two, right? They have to go to Green Bay next week and play that defense. So, like, in the NFC North in particular, because of how hard these games are, the schedule doesn't let up, right? You go to Green Bay, then you go to Houston. You know, later in the season, you're going to have to go to San Francisco. You host the Bills. So as good as this team has played, I think this is what makes the NFC North so exciting. It still feels like the division's up for grabs for at least three teams. That'll be another huge one for the for the show, Lions at Packers. Oh, next week. Well, and, and Love's a little banged up. Like, we'll get into that a little yeah, later but even if I mean, they're four-point dogs. Or they're four, only four-point favorites going into Green Bay with Malik Willis playing. So just saying, this game is not decided. Wait, the Packers are a four-point home dog? Yeah, Packers are four-point home dogs with, right now. With Willis. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I, I think they're assuming Willis plays because the Packers have a buy afterwards. Groin injuries in particular linger. Uh, West and Dell can tell you about Trey Burton and his groin injuries and how they never, <laughs> ever went away. I think Willis so, is better what, than Love. You want to let it rest and heal. Look at how disgusting this is, looking at the standings here in the NFC North. We start off 5-0, and Ziggy, and we're in third place through Week 7. The Bears are 4-3, and three and they're dead last. Yeah, the Bears are 4-3, and three, lost on a Hail Mary heartbreak. And Caleb came back to earth, by the way. Caleb was what, good what in the fourth quarter. I'm we'll, defending we'll him. There. He had, what, 90 passing yards, no touchdowns, sacked three times. He, he was, was great in the fourth quarter. He was back there. I'm great saying the four quarter. and three would be the best record in the NFC West. It'd be the second best record in the NFC South. NFC North, that's dead last. Oh, no. If you go through it all, yeah, in, in the NFC divisions, you would have you would be tied for, as far as losses go, the best, like the least number of losses in at least two of the conferences. So it's uh, it's just crazy how good the division's been this year. Uh, all right, so the Lions remain borderline unstoppable. It's it's, it's crazy. It's just, it's just crazy. Give me your Lions, Ziggy. Like, oh. <laughs> Come on. So uh, there you go. Okay, we'll move ahead here. Let's go on to the the Broncos and the Panthers. This was this was a game where Jack. I can't remember who you picked in this one, uh, but then when you discovered Bryce Young was playing, you you immediately went, Oh, oh I know, I had the Broncos. Did you have the Oh, you, you the Broncos yeah. are your boys, but I remember you went, Oh, Bryce Young is playing, and then you went, Oh, Broncos by a million. Yeah, so Bryce something. Young, Broncos win and cover. Yeah. So it's 28 14, Denver wins. Bo Nix's numbers 28 for 37, 284 yards, three touchdowns. I remember watching with Jack the Jets Broncos highlights. That was a rainy day here in New Jersey. It was a windy day, and Bo was horrible. Like Jack, Jack and I were laughing at the highlights, just openly laughing. And I went back today and I watched, rewatched the game. I'm like, Bo looks good. <laughs> Bo looks really good. And I mean, maybe maybe it was a good bandwagon to hop onto, Jack, earlier this year. Um, and I understand the Panthers are, are pretty horrible. Just They are just objectively very bad. <laughs> but at five and three, Bo's playing well. Sean Payton, as much as I dislike him from the 2009 season, knows how to coach a football team. Like, Denver looks good, man. No, they do. But I, the Bears beat the Panthers, right? Recently? The Bears beat the Panthers. So I, I, I don't want to sit here and contradict myself because nice. I gave Caleb Williams no credit at all for beating the crappy Panthers. And, you know, this kind of proves my point. Like, I don't think he's that good. I don't think Bo Nix is all that good. He just tore up a college defense. Well, I'm happy to see it because I'm a, a Broncos guy and I like Bo Nix. I like the squad. This is expected. Like, this game well, it should be. Like, like, like I don't, a, I don't like, know if it's expected. No, no, it's to beat the Panthers okay. is expected. Like a game like this can only, yeah. it can only hurt you. It can't really be a, it can't really help you in my eyes. Like you have to win this game. If you do it's go like, oh, great, they won. But if not, then it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Bo Nix looks solid. But again, I, I think I can go in there and tear up Carolina. We saw Bo Nix do it. We saw Caleb Williams do it. I think Ziggy could do it. So I, I, I I'm not going to look too, too much into this game. Bryce Young's the terrible. Bo- if we were at home against the Panthers, it doesn't move the needle too much for me. The you one thing Broncos I will got. say for Bo Nix is compared to Caleb Williams, Bo Nix has done a lot more with a lot less. He's better than right? Caleb, yeah. 
Yeah, like he had two. I mean, Sean Payton, very rarely after a decisive win, do you see a coach come out and talk about how terrible everyone is? But he lit up into the offense, excluding Bo Nix, right? You have two wide receiver fumbles. You can't have that. Javante Williams, 17 carries for 44 yards. Like the things around things have not gone nearly as well around Bo Nix. And still, he leads rookie quarterbacks in touchdowns. He's got 12. Jaden Daniels has 11. In his last six games, he has nine touchdowns to one interception. Like, Bo Nix, after a really rough start to the season, I was optimistic this is how it would go. I said it would be a rough first couple of weeks for Bo Nix, but that once he settles in and gets a little bit more used to NFL speed, he can play well. He's played about as good as Jaden Daniels has in the past five or six weeks. Uh, yeah, well, past I, five or more six touchdowns. Weeks. I think Bo Nix mm. is. I think Bo Nix is good, and the Broncos are, are a decent team, and Nix is better than Caleb is. But like, I'm just, all I'm saying is, is a win like this doesn't do anything beyond what I'm already feeling about the no, Broncos. No, they go to Baltimore next week. They're nine point dogs. I'm not saying they got to win because that is a tough game to win. But their next two games are at Baltimore, at Kansas City. He will get a chance to prove he can play with the best. Dude, I, I mean, even the next three, then they have Atlanta at home. They have, all, they have three division-leading teams. Or, well, sorry, not the Ravens. Right <laughs> they get smacked next week but but at Baltimore. They have three very good teams over the next three weeks. At the, I mean, the Broncos find a way to, to win a couple of those. It's yeah. the, the, this the is the worst change. spot in the world to draw Baltimore. Yeah, wait, they're at Baltimore next week? Yeah, off losses. In Baltimore, too. Oh, that's, that's a nightmare. That's just a nightmare. I do think, though, I disagree slightly, Jack, that I think this matters a bit because if they come out and and it's a close game with with the Panthers and like you said, the expectations to pound Carolina, like, OK, good. Like you, they did it to me. That's like check. All right. They can beat up on the crappy teams and Bo can look really good in those games. I think this is a big win for for uh, for Broncos fans in terms of believing in the team. They're not going to win the Super Bowl or anything, but if they make the playoffs this year. It's, I mean, it's, it, what an unbelievable accomplishment for that team. No, Bo's good. I mean, I'm a Broncos guy. Him, I, I have Bo, it. Caleb, and Jane Daniels have all, I mean, Jane Dan- Daniels has been great all no, year. Take but one I think all, no, no, they've all no, gotten no. a lot better as the year's gone on. Bo and Jane Daniels have. Caleb is, we all know Caleb. You can't say Caleb better. hasn't gotten better. He came back to earth last week. He was terrible. He came back to earth. He, I, again, good fourth quarter, but Caleb has gotten way better from the beginning. He's good against bad teams. <laughs> sure enough. Sure. <laughs> but, uh. It makes me kind of wish, you know, J.J. McCarthy. And seeing Drake May on the opening or uh, score touchdown against the Jets y- uh, yesterday, I was like, damn, I wonder what J.J. McCarthy. Here I am complaining. Well, We're fine. Yeah, well, you know what's more fun than starting a rookie quarterback is winning a bunch of games. What's funny is so many teams this year have been able to do both. Jack, your headphones okay? Yeah, they are. It's weird. It hurts my ears a little bit, but I'm pushing through. I'm no, pushing it's through. A tough, he's a tough it's, guy. Yeah, he's a tough I'm, guy. I'm, I'm a tough guy. All right, uh, I'll be all right. I've been through a lot, and I've handled far worse, so I can deal with some headphones. We we continue on. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we continue on here. The Eagles and the Bengals. Um, so this was actually a 17-17 game. I don't know how many people had their eyes on the Eagles-Bengals, although I, I thought it was a really fun matchup this weekend. It was 17-17 late in the third quarter, and then here's how it went from there. Devontae Smith, 45-yard touchdown. Turnover on downs for the Bengals. There's a great play by Cooper DeGene, by the way. If you uh, if you haven't watched that fourth down stop where he's just chasing Jamar Chase all over the field um, and winds up uh, making a great behind uh, the sticks loss. Uh, field goal for Philly. Interception from the Bengals. Uh, touchdown Philly on a 12-play, 85-yard drive, eating up seven and a half minutes, ending with a, uh, a, sh- a tush push. Then a fumble by the Bengals, another field goal for Philly, and the game's over 37-17. Like, it was, from the end of the third quarter on, complete domination by the Eagles. And uh, this is the kind of this is the kind of Philly team that has me scared as a, uh, you know, I still believe in the Vikings as an NFC contender. Watching Philly do these kinds of things, that end of game, that's who they can, I mean, they can just wear you down and then Saquon, A.J. Brown, so physically imposing, Devontae Smith, not physically imposing, but just a great receiver. Like when their receivers are healthy, and I think people are way too quick to overreact on a Philly team that was down AJ Brown and Devontae Smith for a few games. I mean, they're really good guys. They're four and zero with AJ Brown on, in the lineup. Yeah, especially to on the road too, and to see how quick a talented team like that can just flip a switch and turn things on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It, I, I I was watching this. It was yeah. You said what seventeen seventeen. The third quarter. I thought since he was going to win at that point. A I think desperate I, Bengals team, too. Yeah, I think I picked since to win this game. I got to look back and... Uh, I believe and, you did. And see, I think, Yeah, I think I did. A desperate Bengals team looking for a win. 
really a must-win game. You're close for three quarters, and then boom. In those 15, 16 game minutes, this looked like the best team in the NFL. And it's scary that they're able that they're capable of being able to do that because not many teams can. And this is really the first time since I I'd say the season opener where it's really felt like this Eagles team was doing that. The Falcons game was all right. Yep. The Saints, Bucks, and Browns games were sort of disasters. The Giants game was great. You win 28 to 3, but it's against the New York Giants. I mean, that's not impressing anybody. <laughs> this Bengals team, as you said, their back was against the wall. Losing this game internally, I know they think the season's basically over. Zach Taylor is on the hot seat and probably should get fired for the way he runs this team. Nevertheless, as you say, going into a close fourth quarter on the road, Cincinnati's one of the hardest places to play. And Saquon Barkley and Jalen Hurts. Saquon Barkley, 108 rushing yards. Jalen Hurts, three rushing touchdowns. I mean, he's he's going to be the Eagles' all-time leading rushing touchdown scorer by the time he leaves. It's unbelievable what this team can do when they get hot. And I can't wait to see towards the end of the season when they start playing the Commanders and the Ravens and the Steelers, what's yes. going to come out of those games. Throw us in there. Throw us in that, in that category. <laughs> well, it's, it's I was waiting for that. Play the Steelers. I'm not saying you're as good as them, but it's always fun to watch I mean, those Steelers. teams you said, I mean, they're they're tough teams right there. Hell they're yeah, all they tough are. Teams. No, but the, uh, I think between the Commanders <laughs> Hell and yeah, the Eagles, they are, brother. like they're both very good, but if they played on a neutral field, I'm picking Philly to win that game. Right against uh, the commanders, commanders right 100%. Yeah. I like the commanders. Yeah, I don't trust the commanders defense. It's, it's, yeah, I, I just think Philly's a better team. Now, it's interesting because if you look at the schedule and you start trying, and it's a tough game, it's a hypothetical game, but if you're playing the schedule game, you're like, okay, I, the Eagles is tougher than Washington. It, the Washington has a lighter road to the playoffs, um, but straight up, I think the Eagles are better. So, th- those games, those division games, I mean, they're gonna, they, they will probably wind up deciding this division if Philly's able to sweep them. They get the tiebreaker. That like that's what you circle if you're an NFC East fan waiting to see what happens there. Um, it depends how oh. good you think Philly is. I did pick Philly. I said Hurts gets his revenge from college football playing oh, against Burrow. You did. You know, yeah. I, I oh, switched. Hurts yeah. sure got his revenge. I, yeah, Three and, rushing touchdowns. Yeah. And yesterday was really the first time we've seen MVP Hurts in quite a bit. Like when you get that Jalen Hurts, this Eagles team. I, I, I here's what I'm thinking, guys. If on the Detroit Lions. And you get that Jalen Hurts playing against you. Like they might be the scariest opposition in the NFC to Detroit. The Lions are probably a dog in that game if Hurts is playing how Hurts can play. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the Eagles. It, for the Lions, who are you fearing? Who are the biggest teams you fear? Green Bay. Yeah, I guess. But like, who else was? Yeah, right. Philly. You knew, yeah. Green Bay, yes. But Jordan Love's been a little banged up this year. He hasn't settled down yet. Who else are to say Minnesota? If the 49ers oh, get healthy. If San, if San Fran gets healthy, I think San Francisco. Oh, yeah, okay. But right now, you have to you have, you have yeah, to watch that no, if you're right. Detroit fan go, oh, no, like we do not want Philly getting Right now, high. it's Philly or the freaking Commanders. I was thinking that was a good spot for the Bengals to win and, and you know, put Philly back a bit. Like, I'm scared of the Eagles getting really good. And that was the first time this year where I've watched them and thought, oh, shoot, like they've won some games, but this was the first one. Really, the past couple of weeks, the Giants do, where I'm like, oh, shit, they're, they're back. These last uh, couple of years, I've been trying to hold on this this hope for Philly because I view them as a team who was in the Super Bowl. And I've been trying to stay high and stay high and stay high and positive. I'm always one of the last people to, to panic on Philly because mm-hmm. I still view them as that team capable of going to a Super Bowl and as that team who was in the Super Bowl not long ago. And they finally showed me this past week in these last 16, 15 minutes of gameplay in Cincinnati, why I was just and valid to keep holding on hope to what this team could be. Yeah, I hope they fall apart. I mean, I'm not an Eagles guy. Oh, I'd love them to fall apart, too. But I I just think they're too good to do so. It's a scary thought with them. Um, Okay, so why don't we move on? Just on the other side of the ball, just say bye-bye Bengals. I told you there was no chance they were making the (laughs) playoffs. Well, actually, There's still no chance they're making the playoffs. I pulled up the rankings here. Right now in the AFC, you have... As far as wild cards go, you have they're a wash. Broncos five and three, the Ravens five and three, the Chargers four and three. Those that's your five, six, seven, and then Colts four and four, and Bengals are three and five. So they're they're two games behind the Chargers. Wait, who's the sixth spot again? The Ravens, and they'll be staying there. Those pansies, <laughs> they ain't moving any higher than that. I can't believe the Steelers right now. They'll be staying in that first sixth place spot. In North. Yeah, no, this this is the three and five. Let me just look. Who the Bengals no, but like, coming up? The Bengals are screwed. Yeah, they they're are. done they, they because got... the last 
would the Bengals have turned it around at this point in the season the last couple of years? You, they would not lose a game by 20 points halfway through. A yeah, game so like they, this? They, 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 they have to win seven of their next nine. And they got two games against Pittsburgh. They got the Ravens, the Broncos, the Chargers, and then the Titans, Raiders, Browns, and Cowboys. I mean, Those even, are nine remaining games. You're yeah. not winning seven. Even of going to Dallas, that's on the road against the Chargers, on the road against the Ravens. Yeah, it's, They'll lose to Baltimore, get swept by Pittsburgh, and lose to Dallas. Well, they always turn around right after we say on this show that they're doomed. So. No, but it was much earlier before I felt. No, no, right? but this, no, is, no, this is now. Ends. Yeah, they're doomed. Yeah. They're doomed. <laughs> and so this is now when they will turn around and be unbelievable. They're pussycats now. The... Packers. Let's go to the Packers. 30-27 win over the Jaguars. It sucks watching them like pull off these last second wins week in, week out, especially now the like, quarterback's out. Malik Willis comes in. He's like all of a sudden turns into Tom Brady. And I mean, he's through five times, but still, it's just it's just ridiculous to see the Packers uh, having these situations. Brandon McManus has been awesome for them. He hasn't hasn't missed a field goal yet. Uh, two game winners in two in two games. Um yeah, I think everything is is clicking in Green Bay. The concern, though, and actually a sigh of relief as well for the Packers is surrounding Jordan Love. Came back today, just a strained groin for Jordan. It's not a, never a good sign when your quarterback is lying on his back with a gazillion medical people around him, and you're and you're you're going, oh geez, here we go again with the knee. Is something wrong? Like just a strained strained groin for Jordan Love. He'll be back. Uh, Probably playing. I think. Do you think he's playing this weekend against Detroit? I mean, we can't. We shouldn't I, speculate, but it's hard to know. We'll see how it goes. I will say this: groin injuries are some of the easiest to reaggravate. Mm-hmm. I would not be surprised if the Packers run it with Malik Willis one more time, take advantage of the bye, and let Jordan Love come back hundred percent. I think that's. But the this is the biggest game of their season up until this point, and will be the biggest game until they play the Lions again. So, if there's a chance you can get him out there, I mean, he hasn't looked right all season. But they might try and push him out. It's hard to say. I also think Malik Willis is capable of winning this game. Really? At home. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. But I guess the sure preview he's capable. for... I mean, they're only four-point dogs. I'm taking them out, right? I think they'll win. Malik, to me, is good. Well, he's been, like, he's I, been excellent when he's played. I think there's a chip on his shoulder. Uh, I like him. I think but he, to be fair, I mean, he threw the ball five times. I think he's better than Jordan Love. He threw the ball five times. Like, like Josh Jacobs, in the absence of Jordan Love, those games, Josh Jacobs has been unbelievable. You know, this is the type of game where everybody, all right, it's Malik Willis. Let's all step up and rise to the occasion for him. Sure. I mean, I, I understand. I understand they want to like step up not, to the occasion. Like, but... it's not like he's bad. No, like, I don't think quarter- he's bad either. There's quarterbacks where if, if a starter's out and they bring in a backup, I'm like, oh, they have literally no chance. That's not the case with Malik Willis. He could win this game. Oh, I, I think Malik, I would be very surprised. But I, 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 don't know I, think, that, I, I think it's possible. I sure. think I love them as a home underdog. <laughs> I feel like the defense gets to well, I, that yeah. feeling. We'll I, I, I have that feeling. The game uh, yeah, we'll preview it, week. but I, I, I do think I like the Packers in that game. So I do have to say about ahead. this Packers team. It's as you look at this Jaguars game. I know some of you have put this in our comments. They'll probably put it in our mailbag. I wasn't. I'm rarely very high on free agent additions, but who knows where this Packers team would be without Malik Willis, without Josh Jacobs, without Xavier McKinney, now without Brandon McManus. Like every single player they added this offseason that was a big acquisition or a small acquisition has made a huge impact for them. And they have you have to be happy about what Gutekunst has done building this team around such that whatever quarterbacks in, whoever gets hurt on defense, you can make things work. I mean, Evan Williams is banged up. He's been playing well. All of these all of these offseason acquisitions that the Packers have made have been, I mean, Edron Cooper, he came on. He had maybe the biggest play of the day against the Jaguars with the strip sack. I mean, they. Yeah, you're right. They, they taught you. I know you don't. I'm way more interested in who people are picking up in the off season. But yeah, they've been huge for Green Bay. What does stink is is it was a nice win on the road. A sloppy game, right? You said love was love was not great through a pick. Did they throw two picks or just one? Pick? Just one. Just one. Yeah, but uh, ended up getting re injured. Malik was to finish the game. Good win, but it is a shame. Like you might as well just lose if you're not going to cover. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you're here by four and a half. You end up doing all this, all that to win by a field goal. Like, yeah. Can't you see my point? Yeah. Just like at that point, just just lose, right? Well, to be fair, I mean they, they probably could have scored a touchdown there if they'd had to. You know, should have. Yeah, they they, they could have at the should've. end of the game. I thought Matt Lafleur was interesting. At halftime, he said we have to change the game plan a little bit because Jordan can't move. And in the first half, I saw a lot of Packers fans were getting frustrated that they're going for the big shot. Jordan can't really do anything in the pocket. And it just it was not going according to plan at all. 
Um, when Malik Willis came in, you they got back to that. I mean, the, the Packers offense with Malik Willis is very funny. Uh, it's a lot of short throws and running the foot and a hell of a lot of running the football. And they've just been crushing people with it. Like when Malik comes in, they're just they dominant on the ground. Uh, but I did see a story. I think Malik actually audibled into that game winning play uh, to Jaden Reed. You know, when he did throw the ball downfield, that was the big one to Jaden Reed to put them in field goal range and end the game. And I'm pretty sure it was a play that the Packers had. Uh, I don't even know if they practiced it, actually. They just knew that it was an option and all the players knew how to run it. And Malik audibled into it on his own um, and won the football game. Like, yeah, this team, uh, I don't know if I have the special feeling that I have for Detroit with the Packers right now. The Packers, to me, are more of like they're surviving, advancing every week. And the scary thing is they're winning games that normally you should be losing. When your quarterback gets hurt and you're, you know, you're losing turnover battles in some games, you should be losing those football games and they're winning them. And the concern for me is, oh, shit, like when Jordan does get healthy and when he does figure it out, which I still think he will, like that's that's when they're going to be a real problem. And the fact that they're six and two and, and they're, they're having mistakes and injuries, that's concerning to me. You yeah, then you look at a guy like Malik Willis, who was projected as a first rounder by a lot of people, right? Ended up falling. Yeah, I mean, he felt like he was I don't know how serious of a first rounder he was. No, that he was a bad quarterback. He fouled like the what mid to late I. third, right? Yeah. But falls to the mid to late third round, and now he's he's backing up Jordan. I mean, this he probably feels like let us let me let me go and 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 earn my stripes here. Like what you know? He's gonna win the job. Like you're no, like, well, no, like no, what? No, but, no. but he won't, and he knows that. But I'd be I'd be motivated. Oh, of course, it, dude. Every I mean, he time. might win a job or a chance at a job. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not there yet because he's still not really. He's throwing well, but until there's a game where he's like really, really, really impresses with his arm, and I guess he kind of did. I can't remember if it's the Colts or the Titans, um, but yeah, like I, I think he's just a, a high quality backup right now, and that's worth millions of dollars. That's a great job. Do you think that and valuable? Do you think that behind closed doors, Malik goes home and says to people he thinks he's just as good as Jordan Love? Who knows? I Who cares? Know but, but I, I, most of the time, I bet you he does. He pro, I, mean, I, bet yeah. you, I bet you he thinks it. It's if, if he goes and beats the Lions, then and we'll see how he looks. But I mean, I, I, I'm not ready to say Malik Willis is going to be competing for a starting job. But I think, <laughs> I think either, that a lot of teams are going to look at him as a very high quality backup right now. And he fits he fits very well with the Packers team. I mean, they have so many weapons and LaFleur is a, uh, generally a solid play caller. So. I mean, you know, it is blue sky. Like, you know, if, if he came in to quarterback the Vikings or the Jets. How how awful! No, 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 no. The no, Jets can't win difference. with freaking Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> no, no. The, the difference Packers is to win with Malik Willis. <laughs> the Vikings, he would probably start off. It would be like Dobbs. Like Dobbs is unbelievable, and then it kind of just fell off. Like, yeah. like you, you buy in a little bit. The Jets, he would just be horrible from the start. They're the Browns, zero horrible points from again. the start. Yeah. yeah, but those teams also like the Vikings are very well coached. The Vikings are very well coached. They have playmakers. The Jets and Browns are just a shit show. And I, I mean, I know people love Kevin Stefanski. I had serious. He's one coach of the year. Like, I, look, I don't know. I, there's a reason I'm not voting for things, but I could have told you when when he was with the Vikings, I had a lot of questions. <laughs> not, I don't know why Kevin Stefanski's taking a jab here, but um, yeah, there are some teams that Malik Willis would be on right now, and it would be going very poorly. But that's what that's why coaching matters, Jack. That's why coaching is important. No, that's just it's just the organization. Yeah, yeah like it's, it's, it's the, that no, is no, the organization. No, no, no. The coach. It's literally just the jersey. I'm serious. Now you think? Like yes, like you can take a bad coach and put him in Green put Bay. On the Packers and put him in Green Bay, and yes, that that I could that I could get behind. Like same with the Steelers. <laughs> it yeah, it just it just works for them. Um, like if Ziggy coached Pittsburgh, they'd be the winning record. <laughs> now the Packers, though, a huge win to to keep track with the Lions and. Yeah, I mean, they play the games for a reason. So we'll have a big preview heading into this week, Packers-Lions. That's, that's a fun game. It's it's. I hope Jordan Love can play, but I, I'm expecting, personally, I'm expecting him to rest up and get healthy because they, they look, they got, they have high, Super Bowl yeah, expectations. Yeah, I mean, you have to go to Chicago right after the bye, host the 49ers, host the Dolphins, and then you're right back at Detroit. Yeah, yep, yep. All right, speaking of uh, the Packers and former Packers, so Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Two and six, they were two and one. Like, like, like they were that's, two and one. That's dark cloud franchise. If I told you before the season started, one team would be six and two, and one's two and six out of the Jets and Steelers, who would you say is is who? I, I mean, mean you, every, everyone would know. 
Yeah, but we also know that the Steelers have things happen. I, like, I mean, uh, I, I have my answer. Yeah. I, I mean, I knew. Yeah, you said you would have said the Jets. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew. You would have said the Jets, but most people would have said the Steelers would be two and six and the Jets would be six and two. It's, uh, it's, you know, I was just thinking back to when they beat the Patriots on that Thursday night game. I mean, they dominated them. They looked unbelievable. That was, was the game when everyone said Rodgers is back. I was there. And, you know, this is a position. I, the Patriots are just a bad team. And I think, I'm sorry, Ziggy, but Greg Zerline has been a problem all year. No, I know he's he, your guy. He is not the biggest problem. <laughs> sorry, he's got to get Zerline's been a problem. I'm sorry. You know, Z- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Ziggy loves Greg Zerline. <laughs> no, I know. We have I know. pictures That's, of Ziggy. He's washed. His career's <laughs> over. He was great with L.A. He I'm was telling mediocre you. in Dallas. He's been terrible in New York. It's that black cloud organization. That's what happens. Well, this is, I don't know if you, how much you followed the media coverage leading up to this, but you could have predicted this was going to happen because Devontae Adams gives that ridiculous post game speech, right? Last week, he's been with the team like four days. He knows what Aaron Rodgers has told him and nothing else. It's like, all y'all are soft. We're a soft team. We're going to come out. We're going to practice hard. We're going to figure out how to win. We're making the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Plus, and then you hear from you. their freaking coach. He says, oh, yeah, this is the best week of practice I've ever seen. This team's going to come out and be great this week. This was the best practice I've ever seen in my history of the Jets. If all you can say about us is we're practicing okay, and this guy who's just Aaron Rodgers' mouthpiece is giving what everyone's calling the most inspirational speech they've heard in their whole life, like they're, everybody in this entire organization, all they can do is talk about how great Aaron Rodgers is, how great he practices, how great he throws, add whoever you want around him. No, this team stinks. Aaron Rodgers stinks. I don't usually talk like this, but it doesn't even feel hyperbolic. You sound like Anyone me. Anyone could have seen. You sound like And me. I did see from this preseason, this team was not making the playoffs. I think I had them finishing last in the AFC East in our preview. I think you actually did. Yeah, and I mean, it's it over. might happen. And I had them third. It's but over. But you, you had them last. I've been trying to hang on for the Jets because I was, I was, I was kind of excited to see People in New York get a little excited, and Rodgers yeah, to come back. Yeah, you're one of those back. New York media types. You see Aaron Rodgers, you see the Jets. Dollar signs flash before yeah, your eyes. Yeah, okay, okay. No, but I, I wanted to see them play well. I thought it would be fun. And um, You're a big name guy. I, maybe that's I what am. your problem Maybe is. I am. Yeah, I like, I like seeing that, the stars that's play what well. Your, that's what your issue is. Like Aaron, Aaron Rodgers knew he screwed the Jets. Like He knew he was, he was he, he's washed. He knew that. I mean, they're done now. Like, yeah, like even, it, even I can see that. Two and six. I mean, that was a game. Like If they if they get to three and five, they're still in a, a boatload of trouble. But you're two games back, and you can make things work if you get hot. Like I really do think that momentum is so important in the, in the NFL. When you but win. they've got a hard schedule left. Oh, they do. No, no, I know they do. But I'm saying winning changes things, and I think you, you pick up some momentum. But now at two and six, I, I mean, this is going to turn into a shit show. I mean, he's also, Rodgers is also just not very good. Did you see you Patriots players after the game saying he can't move in the pocket? They're like, it's sad to see him no, going is, out this way. I was watching him in that Steelers game. He can't. He can't move like he used to move. His arm's not as strong as he used to be. And that's what happens. He's 40. You know what it is, too? Like, no, what do you expect? I understand why all Jets fans are, should be really pissed off, but they probably should have won this game. I mean, I'm going back. Like, I'm rewatching it today, and I, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, like, how did they lose this? Like, they, like it, you know, you, you just can't give up a game-winning drive to Jacoby Brissett and the Patriots. Like, you can't let them go on a game-winning drive. You have to, like, Greg Zerline makes his, his kicks they probably win this football game. Like, it's all... Yeah. I mean, like, this is not a game they should have lost. They should have probably... Mean, yeah. Like, they should have beat Buffalo if Zerline made his kicks. And, I mean, I don't know. The Hail Mary was lucky. But they probably should have beat Denver, too. Like, the Jets' season is not that far away from being in a position where they could be relevant. And just everything that could... Even though they have everything they wanted, they got Devontae, Rodgers is happy, like, Rodgers got all his guys, Salah's gone. Like, they got everything they wanted. But... It's still all gone wrong. I'm not trying to sit it's, here and crap on Rodgers. Like, it, most of these games are probably not his fault for the most part. Well, uh, I mean, he doesn't help, but let's not forget his defense gave up 25 to New England and 37 to Pittsburgh in the last two weeks. No, the defense has been terrible. Yeah. I mean, the, the Vikings shredded them. The Vikings shredded them in the first half and ended that game early. I mean, I know the Jets had a chance. That, but that second half sparked the Vikings' downfall. That second half? That second half of the Jets game sparked your downfall. Barely holding on. Against a team who stinks. Bye week. Loss, loss. What do you think it was the second half of the Packers, though? The second half of Vikings. We're yes. frozen, fellas. No. We're, no, we're frozen, not. fellas. No, we're not. You're frozen. Oh, no, I'm frozen. You're frozen. Ziggy. 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 Good but, call out, though. You know what's awful? 
I mean, to be a Jets fan and you have Aaron Rodgers now healthy, you get Adams, and you just said, we're sitting here and you just said, yeah, but they should have won that game. We're oh, sitting here yeah. talking about a two and six team who should have beat the Patriots. Oh, yeah, that's why they're two and that, six. I mean, that is rock bottom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> should have beat the Patriots. Yeah, like, you know, they probably should have won. I think they should have. But for us to be sitting here saying they probably should have won this game, now they're two and six, probably should have beat the Pats, but didn't do it. That's horrendous. A lot of shoulda, woulda, coulda with the Jets. Yeah. And frankly, that's it, a, like, like, you know what it is, Jack? The Chiefs find ways to win every game. The Jets find ways to like. There's the that. That's the difference. The Chiefs are amazing. No, they're amazing. But I'm saying like, the, like they're a winning organization. They find like they they even games that they shouldn't win, they find the way to win. Yeah. And the Jets find ways to lose games they should win. It's, it's the little things. It's it's dark cloud. It's like the Vikings in big games <laughs> will find the way to lose. Although I'm being optimistic again this year, so I guess I have to. But you know, it's it's just. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, Jets fans are just miserable right now. They're so, they're so, they're done. I mean, like, think about how how dark it is for a Jets fan. Because not only are you bad this year, like, this was supposed to be the year, and now you have, and now you have. Maybe Rodgers comes back. I don't know. You think like maybe he comes back? If not, you starting over at quarterback, like. You know, and let's not forget, like, the Aaron Rodgers curse has spread to the team. Like, Sauce Gardner looks like a bum. <laughs> He's like, a I, bum. Nobody's talking about this because of how many other things are wrong, but Sauce Gardner's played horribly this year. Like, nothing on this team is going right. Everyone's terrible. And right. I don't think the Aaron Rodgers plague is going to go away, even if, you, even if you kick him off the team next year. Rodgers brought the darkness with him. He, 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 he can't leave the darkness. I mean, he might have to go back to being called Ahmad Gardner. If you're going to let Jacoby Brissett put together a game-winning drive on you, you ain't got the sauce. Wait, his name's not Sauce? It's a mod? Are, 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 you, are you serious? The player this? you would take number one in an NFL draft, you don't know his name? Yeah, I thought it was Sauce. He's you're, you're joking. I, I, wouldn't you're take, joking. I, wouldn't take you're joking. I wouldn't take him one anymore now, knowing his name is a mod. I thought it was Sauce Gardner. Are you, are you being serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Jack's all about the big names. He's he's the market. <laughs> I, I texted a, a Jets fan the other day. I said, if the Jets went on the road to a local high school team in our area, what's the score? He goes, 174 to 2. Jets lose. They get a lucky safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bad time to be a Jet fan. Jeez. All right. We uh we'll just, I'll just I'm just gonna quickly look through this. Um Falcons over the Bucks is a big win for Atlanta. Control of the NFC South, you know, I, I I thought Tampa actually played really well, um, given that they were down Godwin and Evans. That's tough without two two of the better receivers in the NFL. Um, and Kate Otten was unbelievable. Like Kate Otten came out, like, he's been coming on lately, but he was just um, amazing in Tight this game. Day. Tight, Tight end day. day. Yeah, no, he he yes. knew, he knew. But at this point, the division's over. Yeah, and and Baker Baker threw two really bad interceptions late that that helped Atlanta wind up grabbing onto the lead. Kyle Pitts, uh, speaking of tight ends, had a great day. Um, but yeah, the NFC South, I think Tampa. I don't, I don't think people realize how over. Like the Falcons are minus four fifty to win the division now, and it's, it's a shame over. too. I, I think that the, the Godwin and Evans injuries have really like they're going to sink Tampa. It's uh, I mean, if look if Tampa stays in, it's a testament to Baker, and and he'll, he's got to be amazing down the stretch, but. This was a huge loss for the Bucs and for Atlanta. Yeah, they should. They're in a really good position here to get a home playoff game. And I don't think Atlanta's on par. I don't think they'll even get to the level of Detroit or what Philly can be. Um, I think they're a good team, not a great one. But hosting a playoff game and then once you're in, I mean, anything could happen. So the, the Falcons pick up a huge win there. Um, sorry, Jack, about your Bucs. No, it's all right. I mean, their, their pirate ship is slowly going down. Uh, I mean, it's not. It's not. They're not done though. No, like, not the bunch at all. Still, they, not like, at all. They're just in a lot of trouble. That, um, that's how I'm feeling it. What was I going to say? The ATL has has changed Kirk a bit, but in a good oh, way. Yeah. Like listening to Kirk Cousins tell his team they were going to walk into the trap and take over the trap. I cringed at that. <laughs> but I mean, I I like it. Uh, he's changed. He's a, changed that's for the better. What Kirk Cousins is right. He says we fight no cap. We walk in your trap. Yeah, take over your trap. He's it's got like the, for anyone else. That would be the worst thing you've ever heard. But Kirk <laughs> yeah. Cousins, it somehow works. He just embraces the fact that he's the lamest quarterback in the NFL. No, but he's got that swag. Works. He's got that like cringy swag to him though, which I like. It's changing the team around. Do you guys think? Well, you say the Cowboys are done now too. They three and four. They've been done. Yeah. Ziggy, they should be. They should be two and five. It's. 
it's going to be an uphill battle for sure. Um, no, I mean, their schedule is tough. They go to Atlanta. They host the Eagles. They host the Texans. They go to Washington in their next four games. It's it's probably done. Guess where the Maybe Cowboys the are. Maybe NFC is weak enough they can sneak in. I don't think well, so. No, no, think guess, guess where they are in the conference right now. Tenth. Ziggy, care to guess? I'm thinking they're behind every NFC West team, right? They're behind two in their own division. They're behind every NFC North team. They're behind the Falcons and the Bucks. Actually, yeah, 13. How many teams is that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13th? Yeah, they're 13th. They're 13th in the NFC right now. Well done. Well done, guys. That, that was pretty good. Um, 13th. Yeah. Hey, Jack has a gut feeling. I have reasoning. We get to the same answer. You bring it together. Right? No, they, I mean, it. They're, they're behind everyone it, except the Giants, the, the Saints, right and the there. Panthers. And, you know, the, the Rams are... When the Rams are healthy, they're they're dangerous. <laughs> so they're ahead of the three worst teams in the NFL. They are. They are. They're <laughs> only, uh, Look, they're... What are they? Three and four here? So they're two back of the... E- they're two back of the Eagles in the lost column. The Eagles are the seventh seed right now. Which is... That's not good. Seeing how so they've played. I... Yeah. I don't know. Like the NFC West is going to get someone. It'll probably probably wind up being the 49ers. Mm-hmm. And then they got to pass the Packers, Vikings, Eagles. I mean, the Bears are still there. Like Seattle and the Rams are coming on. I think Dallas is done. Yeah. I do too. And they're, and, they're, and they're just not playing well too. It's, no. If there's one thing, if they were losing close, like they just look bad. And even their last win too against against Pittsburgh, they looked terrible. Mm-hmm. That's just us looking worse. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, can I say something yeah. confident I'm going to over regret? Sure. They're not done for this season. They're done for the rest of the Dak Prescott era, however long that is. He has looked terrible this year. No, I get that nothing around him is working. You've got like Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook, two has-beens trying to make things work. <laughs> like you've got C.D. Lamb. You've got to be able to play better than Dak Prescott has played. And honestly, it's getting hard for me to see the light where Dak Prescott returns to MVP form. Man. I mean, I don't think it's crazy to disagree with that, though. It feels crazy because he became the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Like four <laughs> I, weeks I ago. think it's I think it's that's a but strong like, take. But a team who hasn't been to an NFC chip under him now just getting older and older. Like what's the what's the belief he'll get there? There is nothing. I think Dak can still uh, I think he's having a bad year. But I, I feel like if the Cowboys remodel that roster a little bit, get the right people in the building, then they can still go on another run with him. But I, I mean, I get where you're coming from, Ziggy. They've looked, they've looked really, really bad. It's good. I mean, they were able to do this before, right? They sort of rebounded after that. Like, tough, like, what was it? The 2022 season was tough, and then he rebounded with 2023. They're going to have to do that again. Can they? I don't know. I mean, dude, I just think there's, I think outside CD Lamb, there's just no one. <laughs> like, I mean, imagine. Like, if- CD had 13 from 146 and two touchdowns, and then it's Tolbert. Ferguson's, you know, he's a tight end. He's good. Turpin, the running backs are Elliott and Cook. Like, they they need they need some guys in there who can do something. Imagine if Russ had CD, he'd be the best quarterback in the league. <laughs> and the 49ers, I was really I was really pulling for Dallas. I don't want the last team in the world I want coming on is San Francisco. They just they still scare me. Oh, and they're on the best team in the NFC. And, uh, yeah, no, no. I was thinking, it, I was like, all right, you got to win here. They go to three and five. Like they they have Detroit coming up. Like they have some tough games. If San Fran's right. playing well. At the end of the year, and get they get it's a top, a they get a top three yeah. seed in the playoffs. They're probably the favorites to go to the Super Bowl. Oh, well, you know all the Lions fans. The Lions fans can see the picture right here. They're gonna get the one seed, that, and and San Fran's gonna come storming on at the end of the year. They'll be the three. So you know, I don't Philly. think that's true. I don't think Lions fans can see that. I think Lions fans don't know what it's like to be a fan of a team that's good and breaks your heart. Although oh, Lions right? fans, you can see it. Lions fans in our comments, they're furious whenever we think something bad's gonna happen to them. They're like, convinced that this is the year. They even had the experience you and I have had, Paul, where the team's pretty good and then just lets you down, not in like a heartbreaking NFC championship like moment, but just way earlier, way before <laughs> things are supposed to go wrong. You and I know what that's like. I don't think they do because the team's been bad for so long. My friend Alex is a big Lions fan. He texts me and like when it was like 34 to 14. He texts me. He's like, geez, this team is so good. I can also see the Lions. Like, Paul. I can see them also, though getting San Fran in Detroit in a playoff game. And it's just like, like screw these guys. Like it's Me just, too. I mean, they just murder. And them. I can see that too. Like, I can actually, I think that would be more likely than the 49ers upside. I do too. This year. I agree. And see, that's, that's where they get got. And that's where they get, yes. <laughs> that's where they get got. Oh, revenge spot. Now this is yeah, our turn. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. We'll wrap it up here on the week eight reaction show. Ziggy, thanks for, uh, thanks for finally stopping your bender, your Halloween bender, taking a pause. 
and joining us here. It's, it was great it's to have right you. right back up. My students better watch out. <laughs> See, how, many, how many Tito shots do you have in the last three days? Zero. <laughs> Find that hard. I can't, I can't lie. I can't lie. <laughs> Uh, and, and it says, yeah, we thank you, Ziggy, for, uh, for, for zooming in from Virginia. Uh, we have, you know, a lot of, it's a crazy week eight. Week eight, Ziggy texts in the middle of it. He goes, is, is this the craziest week of the season? It might have been. It was, it was a lot of fun. So we'll see what happens. Uh, a lot of big games coming up in week nine. We'll have all the preview material. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you later.